Hello again, everybody. I'm Charlie Gorsh. And I'm Cam Carmen. Thanks for tuning us in here on the Weather Channel. We have got some very cold conditions on throughout the Northeast. The northeast is cold and it's windy, and there's more wind on the way. And another mm -hmm. storm is headed for Washington State, where they already have flash flood warnings. Out. Yeah, and they've had a lot of rain lately. More of it in store. Although today, some of those temperatures were above normal and made yeah, way for some record break, highs. Got a little break today. Uh -huh. yeah. It's pretty nice there, but it doesn't look like it's going to last. We'll take a look at what's happening across the West as well as the entire country and the world. First of all, the temperatures in Saudi Arabia depict what's happening there. Things are quieting down, as we've been telling you, as far as the hot temperatures have been concerned the last couple of weeks from Dahrain. The temperature up around 91 degrees today, but heading over toward Medina at 90 with a low at 64 degrees. Back home, we are talking about very pleasant readings in the west, kind of cool and blustery in the northeastern U.S., and very gusty winds are making those wind chill factors pretty brutal in some cases. The temperature up around Caribou, Maine is 28 degrees right now. It's kind of nippy around Boston in New York City, 47 degrees, 66 in Atlanta, a very nice day to be found there, 71 over toward Kansas City, while heading back in the southwestern U.S., up near 90 one more time, kind of hard to think about wintertime activities in Phoenix, Arizona, and around the rest of the West, for that matter, Santa Maria, California, 86 degrees, they had a new record high, Sacramento tied it, Sheridan, Wyoming, 69, Spokane, Washington, 62, but changes are coming on through, and we expect a storm system with quite a lot of vim and vigor to come on in and really kind of uh, cause these conditions to deteriorate over the next couple of days. So hopefully if you like this sunny regime, you can get out and take advantage of it. Other than that, well, if you're an avid skier, get ready for some more snow. It's coming on through. High pressure and control from the four corners all the way to the southeast. And of course, Veterans Day 1990, a lot of folks getting... A very crisp fall day to be found today throughout the tri-state vicinity. And temperatures were below normal. Are they going to stay that way? We'll let you know. Check it out. We'll first of all tell you what normal you can expect. And as we go back in time, we see an increase in cloud cover moving on through the Ohio Valley into central New York and Pennsylvania. The winter weather advisories have been posted here as the lake effect snow machine has been turned on. Real first uh, big blast of lake effect snow this season. What happens is the cool northwesterly winds whip across the waters of the the lake, which are still relatively warm for this time of year. Then they pick up the moisture and deposit it in the form of snow. So those typical areas like Rome, New York, back to Buffalo, Niagara Falls, Syracuse, heading on down to Erie, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, all in the line tonight for seeing some snowfall. Let's check out the current surface map and depict what is happening right now. Some of it, this precipitation, is in the form of rain, some of it in the form of snow, but you can see the tightly packed isobars from what's left of that existing storm system and with a new one coming on through causing quite a bit of wind around the country. This is when these lines are close together like that. They're indicative of equal lines of pressure and you can bet on some very big gusts of wind blowing on through your neck of the woods when these isobars are so close like they are right now. Heading back into northern Ohio, some snow and some rain mixed back into central Indiana. They've mostly seen a rain event. Whatever's left of this precipitation is going to head eastward through tomorrow afternoon and will mostly fall in the form of snow. Some of it could total four to six inches, maybe a foot, in some of the isolated areas around the typical lake effect vicinity. Cold front sliding on down through the southeastern U.S. Really not much fanfare with this, but we will look to the northwest for the next system. So if you are hopping on a plane, doing any business travel on Monday from New York, possibly to Seattle, bring along the umbrella. You'll need it. In the meantime, tonight, snowy conditions, gusty winds, and some cloud cover coming on through. Again, as promised, those temperatures will be dropping. 28 degrees for West Point, 33 at Manhattan, with a high temperature tomorrow of only 40 degrees. Should be mostly sunny for the most part, however, and across a good deal of the rest of the week. Looking good, but crisp and cool. Thanks for tuning us in here on the Weather Channel. I'm Cam Carmen. And I'm Charlie Welsh. And we're pleased that you joined us on this Sunday evening. It is a pleasant day over a great deal of the nation. It is, indeed. But there are some places that leave a lot to be desired. But the winter coats are out in full force in mainly the northeastern U.S. It's and the chilly. hip boots are out in the northwest. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, let's check. It is a beautiful day for most of the country. Lots of sunshine, dry weather, and uh, afternoon temperatures in the 60s and 70s. But there are some wet spots across the country. We'll talk about those. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here at the Weather Channel for Weather Center. I'm Mike Seidel. And I'm Jim Cantori. Unfortunately, with this change, we are seeing a lot of windy conditions, even some wind damage. 
up through the Appalachian chain last night, some tornadoes in uh, parts Carolinas. of North Carolina. That's At right. the so rain there is ever with for yeah. now for we're, several days. We're talking about a lot drier air, so good news. Uh, a little wet for you the rush hour this morning. This morning in New York, the biggest problem was definitely the wind. Moderate to heavy rain, though, started before daylight, and strong winds made a hectic rush hour for many this morning. Some reports of street flooding and very windy conditions on area bridges. Wow, that is a quite a culmination of umbrellas you've got there in the Big Apple. Well, let's go ahead and check things out for you. We'll start off with the current analysis. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This time of the year, you get these stronger areas of low pressure in the mid-latitudes where the cold front moves so quickly that it actually catches up with the warm front and the front occludes. So you'll see a lot more of these purple fronts which are basically occluded fronts. Notice the warm frontal barbs and the cold frontal barbs all together here. So, cold air rushing into New England, cold air over the lakes. We've even got some lake effect rain showers today in the upstate of New York, as well as western New York and down in toward the Bradford Plateau. How about that for jumping right into fall, huh? But, as Mike and I mentioned, just a beautiful fall day for many today. Drier air into North Carolina here. And the next little upper air disturbance is rolling across the land of 10,000 lakes right now. And with that, just a few light showers. All the moisture is really with this thing and getting kicked out rapidly. Here's the rain that we have for you this afternoon, all the way from Newark, Vermont, a beautiful area, Berlin, New Hampshire, up towards Sugarloaf, Maine. Some brief heavy showers here, and you'll see how quickly the rains clear out of Boston. I-95 quarter tonight will be dry for you all the way up into Portland, and for that matter, all the way down to New York City. So much drier rush hour for many. Here is the Boston area. Odd how nice it is to be in the Commonwealth this afternoon. Just some nice fall color starting to show up out there as well, and the rain's coming to an end. Unfortunately, this wind here is probably going to knock a lot of the leaves off the trees in northern New England, where they're just getting into some peak color as we speak. So that's kind of a bummer there. But all in all, hang in there. It looks like a lot of these areas, I, saw, I was up here a couple of weeks ago, are already starting to show a lot of brilliance in the colors. The cool, crisp nights that we had late last week have really helped to accelerate the fall color show. Most of our rain in Maine, as you saw, winds continue. These are current winds now with gusts. Look at the gusts around Philly, 35 miles an hour, 23 at Logan Field. There's 30 up around Muskegon. So we're still windy, not only in the northeast, but also back in the Midwest. Temperatures have cooled down some 20 to 30 degrees, plus it's so much less humid. 69 in Philly, 67 in New York, 65 in Boston. Looks like a good one tonight, too, in Baltimore for the Yankees doubleheader with the Orioles. Hopefully they'll wrap things up with one game. Here comes that occlusion through this afternoon, and of course the rains will go with it. Rain's already out of Boston, so we can forget about that. Notice uh, back up into the upper Great Lakes, we have those showers. Again, if uh, any of these reach the ground, you'll be pretty lucky, and more than likely that will occur near the lakes. It won't occur very far away from the lakes because the air is still relatively dry. All right, what else do we have for you here? I believe we have these satellite pictures of the past six hours. Again, confirming that nice day that we have out there from the Rockies into the southeast and also out west. Well, what's happening in the rest of the nation, especially the south and the west? Not much, but I guarantee you Mike Seidel is going to find a couple of things to talk about. Right, Mike? That is right, Jim. Southwest, Southern California, getting more record heat this afternoon. Most of the south and uh, Gulf Coast, sunshine and mild temperatures, and that will continue through the weekend. And good news, finally, for those of you in North Carolina, the rain has come to an end. It moved offshore just before dawn this morning. Now, some areas that were flood-soaked with Hurricane Floyd's 20 inches of rain received an additional 8 inches over the past two days. But now that the weather has dried out, we expect that finally the rivers, the Tarnus rivers, will drop below flood stage in the next day or so and will stay below flood stage. We had hoped for that after Floyd, but then we've had a couple rounds of some very heavy rainfall. Let's deal with a beautiful weather. Canadian high pressure building in, scouring out the atmosphere, so the weather couldn't be any better for most of us, all the way from Raleigh, Durham, where you've had about 20 inches of rain, making it your wettest month on record here in October, or rather last month in September, now it is early October. Atlanta, Dallas looking good, and all the way to the West Coast. We'll deal with that in just a moment. First, though, back into the southeast, where we have sunshine galore, comfortable temperatures, a crisp morning, and ditto for the next several mornings. It's going to be an absolutely terrific outdoor weekend for some hiking, going up to the Smokies, heading to Florida, though, this afternoon, and the next couple days all the way to South Florida. The front will be moving in that direction and then kind of washing out. So you won't get the drying effects around Miami and the Florida Keys. You'll have a few showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Some of those showers could uh, bring some downpours, some tropical downpours, and uh, some locally gusty winds. But other than that, uh, we don't expect any problems as uh, this front drifts to the south. 
It's fair and it's high and dry across the, the Carolinas, the Gulf Coast, into the Southern Plains. And this high here is effectively blocking the Gulf of Mexico from opening up. So as that next front comes in through mid-America, through Chicago and the lake areas, it just doesn't have any moisture to work with, and that's why it's going to be a dry frontal passage in Chi-Town. Look at these two points, 43 in Atlanta, 35 in Louisville. South of the front, it's still uh, steamy in Tampa, 76 with that dew point telling us uh, how much moisture there is here at the surface. Because of that, the chance of a shower or thunderstorm in parts of the Sunshine State. Looks good for the Panhandle beaches and over towards Biloxi, Gulfport, and the Big Easy. In the west, we have our next front becoming stationary as the high builds in and the winds come around the base of the high. That easterly wind will slam into the front range. We'll get the clouds and we'll get some rain and snowfall late tonight and tomorrow. Not expecting any serious snowfalls, certainly at elevations where most of us live and watch the Weather Channel. Other side of the coin, deserts are heating up. We've got the Santa Ana effect in Southern California. Not a tremendous amount of wind, but those winds are getting squeezed and funneled through the canyons. And if you're watching from the valleys, so the San Gabriel or San Fernando valleys this afternoon, you will have temperatures up above the century mark. Burbank yesterday tied a record, believe it was 103, and already the valleys up there in the mid to the upper 90s, 93 at LA, 89 Phoenix. Delightful day as it uh, finally warms up this afternoon to about 70 in Denver. As far as the forecast goes, there are your afternoon highs, 75 Denver, and a lot of heat continuing in the southwest and through the deserts for the next couple of days. Now with more on that forecast for tonight and tomorrow, here's Jim Cantori. Mike, thank you very much. Uh, we take you into the map through early this evening, and of course the fronts continuing to push east, especially in the northern tier here. A lot of these will just race east around that fast moving, or actually fast rotating, I should say, upper air low. As Mike mentioned, we're moisture starved with this second front because all the deep tropical air has been pushed out to sea. Nice high pressure settling in. You saw that 40 degree dew point map that Mike showed us. Well, that was just a little bit of a hint of what we're going to have for lows tomorrow morning in the south. It's going to be a chilly one, and no doubt. That'll help to accelerate that fall color show in the Appalachians. Most of our rain in Maine this afternoon. I uh, haven't found one station yet up in the Great Lakes that's actually reporting rain, so most of that is not reaching the ground, as you would expect with dry air. And just a beautiful day. Look at that strong late September, early October sun. Still very, very evident there with those highs in the 70s and 80s. But as we look into tomorrow morning, even a few 30s up there in northern Georgia. Happy to see it. Beach Mountain, North Carolina this morning, 33. And they'll be, actually, they'll probably be in the 20s tomorrow morning. Likely. We'll check your local weather in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's another breakthrough from... Sunny and 74, a beautiful fall day in store. Saturday's high, 72 with sunshine. A few clouds Sunday, a few sprinkles, showers on Monday, as well as Tuesday with highs in the 60s. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us
Chicago and Indianapolis, New York and Boston, back toward Atlanta. It should be a pretty nice day all in all. We will see a bit of wet weather here, though, and maybe even some snow. We've got some colder air that's moved in and snow showers in Montana and maybe into Idaho and into Wyoming, especially in some of the higher elevations. We can't rule out that possibility of wintry precipitation. But a look at the map shows that really most everyone is going to have very quiet weather, and that includes your Saturday, at least across the southern half of the country. But along our front here to the north, a few showers in Michigan and Wisconsin, light rain back into the Midwest and look out around Kansas City, around Des Moines, around Chicago, because we could have some wet weather. And then on the northern and western fringes of that area of precipitation with the colder air in place, we will see that chance for snow for you. And it's going to be around on Sunday, too. Wyoming, maybe into northern Colorado and still not seeing a lot of movement with this area of rain, so you're still going to see some showers here. Florida, pretty much every day you'll have at least the chance for showers and storms, but up and down the west coast things are very quiet indeed. Windy conditions in Montana on Monday, but uh, everyone else, uh, wind should not be too much of a factor, but again, it's right along this front here. Look out in northern and central New England, look out in the Ohio Valley, back into the Plain States, some showers, and during the morning hours, we may even see some snow falling here through the Colorado Rockies. Something else to notice is that we see a little more moisture in place across the Gulf Coast in the southeast as there's a lot more green on the map, more rain, more thunderstorms possible here. And once again, from New England back to the Ohio Valley, we can't seem to get rid of those showers, and they may be around on Wednesday, too. Of course, something to keep in mind is that this is a forecast that's pretty far out in advance, and you'll want to keep checking back in with us as we get closer to next week, midweek, and we'll be able to fine-tune that forecast for you. Well, our temperatures, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to be cool here across the northern states, 40s and 50s for your high temperatures here. So. Again, it's going to be quite cool, but to the south, nice and mild. Lots of 70s, lots of 80s. We may even see some 100-degree heat in the southwest. That trend continues into Saturday. If anything, it just gets cooler through the northern states, uh, 30s and 40s here. Uh, Sunday, the 30s still around, especially in Montana and Wyoming and on into South Dakota and Nebraska with 80s along the Gulf Coast. That's where the mildest temperatures will be, but we may see that cooling down just a bit toward Monday and certainly into your Tuesday. Well, that's it for your weekly planner. It's time now for our weekend outlook, and there's a lot going on this weekend. A lot of folks are going to see some pretty nice weather, including Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where the Apple Harvest Festival takes place on Saturday. You should have a high in the mid-70s, partly cloudy skies. It should be a very nice fall day for you. It's going to be great also in Pine Mountain, Georgia, for the Buick Challenge. 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, so get out and enjoy the nice weather here, and it should be nice across a lot of the southeast. In Freiburg, Maine, the Freiburg Fair Sunday, clouds around but not expecting any wet weather, a high right around 62 degrees. And finally, the Napa Auto Care 500, Martinsville, Virginia, sunny at 77. Well, here's the big picture. We've got some cool temperatures to the north, milder to the south, and the front separating those two air masses will be the focal point for some rain, maybe some snow back through the northern Rockies. More cool temperatures in store for Sunday and more wet weather, more snow. Well, that's it for your weekend outlook. Here's a look at what's going on out there right now. Some rain in the Northeast. We'll have all the details coming up next. Umbrellas are the fall fashion statement in the Northeast. An update on high winds and rain. Plus, the Southeast gets a break from rain, but rivers are still overflowing. Details ahead on Weather Center. We've been very, very busy. CNBC meteorologist Joe Witte says the trend could continue. But then again, long-range predictions of hurricanes are very difficult. Every time somebody makes a prediction of the end of the world, the world never ends. So what are the chances that they got it right this time? Michael Shermer publishes Skeptic magazine. He says people thought the world was going to end during the Black Plague in Europe in the 14th century and during the American Civil War. 
just the way humans try to make sense of death and natural disasters. There has to be something behind it, and that something is the end of the world. For drier conditions, places like Atlanta and Charlotte, and boy, you can really use the chance to dry out here, especially in the eastern Carolinas. Now, northward, you saw rain this morning around New York City and Boston, but things are really quieting down, and you can see that by tomorrow there's not going to be wet weather anywhere here along the east coast, except maybe here in extreme southern Florida where you could see a thunderstorm or two. By far, the more active weather is going to be here through the central states, but even that's not terribly impressive. Some showers here in Minnesota and Iowa and South Dakota. We may see some snow here through Montana and Wyoming. Look out for some windy conditions from the panhandle of Texas northward into Kansas, the Pacific Northwest. Watch out for fog, especially during the morning hours. You may want to give yourself a little extra time to get to work tomorrow morning, maybe some reduced visibilities for you. That should be over with by Saturday, though. The East Coast still pretty quiet except for Florida, and really pretty much every day we'll see the chance for showers and storms scattered about Florida. Here to the north, though, it's this front right in this area that will be the focal point for rain. Some light rain maybe around Des Moines or Chicago or up to we begin to see a little bit of movement with that on Tuesday into the Ohio Valley in southern New England. The rain's still around in the southeast. So these are the areas to watch. The Great Lakes region, the southeast, and the Intermountain West for your Wednesday. And keep in mind, this is a forecast pretty far out in advance. You will want to keep checking back in with us as we get closer and closer to next week. Well, here are those temperatures, and as I mentioned earlier, we've got that dip in the jet stream here, and that's allowing some cooler air to spill southward, so that folks in the Dakotas are only going to get into the 30s for highs tomorrow, 40s in Minnesota. Contrast that with temperatures much warmer to the south. The front uh, is sort of uh, separating those two air masses so that the colder temperatures are to the north. To the south, though, 70s and 80s. We may even see some 90s and 100s in the southwest once again. And that cold air just dips farther and farther to the south, the 30s and 40s. And ahead of it, we're going to see the 70s into the Ohio Valley, 80s across the Gulf Coast states. And Monday, maybe moderating temperatures just a bit here to the north, but still 40s for you from Kansas to Michigan and maybe even parts of New York, too. And you can expect more of the same for your Tuesday. Well, that's it for your weekly planner. It's time now for our weekend outlook, which is sponsored by Royal Caribbean. And here are some big events for this weekend, including the Apple Harvest Festival for you in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. 75 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Enjoy the fantastic weather there, as you will in Pine Mountain, Georgia, for the Buick Challenge. 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. So nice weather for you there. The Freiburg Fair in Maine, 62 degrees. Plenty of clouds around, but we're not forecasting any wet weather at this point for Sunday. And finally, the Napa Auto Care 500 in Martinsville, Virginia, 77 under sunny skies. Well, here's the big picture and a cool start to your weekend across the north, a mild start to the south, but you'll be dodging some showers here to the north and watch out for the wintry weather for the northern Rockies. More cool temperatures for Sunday and more wet weather affecting virtually the same areas, the snow affecting some of the same areas too. Well, here's a look at what's going on out there right now. Quiet weather with a few exceptions. We'll tell you about those exceptions coming up on Weather Center. Stay with us. The Northeast gets a break from rain, but not wind. Plus, sunshine helps recovery efforts in flooded areas of North Carolina. Details plus what's in store for... is gone, but a cool breeze is blowing through the nation's capital and across much of the east. FEMA's top people are getting a first-hand look at the devastating flooding in North Carolina. The cleanup is beginning again. And where in the world is the best place to watch the leaves turn? Jim Cantore will have the answer. Hello and welcome to Weather Center. I'm Nick Walker. And I'm Christina Abernathy. Thanks for joining us. Well, ahead, fall has arrived for most of you. We'll show you if it will stick around for Friday. But first, let's take a look at the current conditions starting in the eastern half of the country. We've got some pretty quiet weather out there. That's because a front has moved east of the east coast. And it's moving out over the Atlantic. And it's meant some pretty quiet weather for most folks in the east today. Although in the northeast, you're seeing some rather windy conditions. A blustery evening for you. Winds have been gusting 20, 30 miles per hour. 
The rain is coming to an end, though. It's along and ahead of our front, moving out of Maine. Now, earlier today, we saw the rain around Boston and New York City, but you can see that that's all gone with just a few showers lingering here in New York State. Where your temperatures are, again, not so bad, 59 in Boston, 63 in New York City, 60 in Philadelphia, and 63 for you in Washington, D.C. So most folks here are in the 50s and 60s, but again, we are seeing some rather breezy conditions, so it may feel just a little bit cooler than the actual temperature indicates. The rain, well, it's moving away, moving out of Maine. Things are looking much better for you, and even the showers that we're seeing here in New York aren't real impressive on the radar. You can see that, uh, again, just a few light showers here. A lot of what we're seeing here is not real rain. What is? It's just that little blob moving through central New York. Not seeing any rain in Boston either. That's all moved out over the Atlantic, and things are certainly quieting down in Maine, too, around Bangor and Augusta. Nothing going on for you. The rain has moved away, and in Holton, you'll want to look out. Still a few showers around, but after that, it looks great. So we will expect a little bit of wet weather here, but again, just light rain for you in extreme eastern Maine. To the south, you are seeing a little bit of wet weather along the tail end of that front in Florida, in central and southern Florida. To the north, though, high pressure is in control, and what a great day you saw in Georgia and into the Carolinas, where you are getting finally a chance to dry out. The sky cleared over eastern North Carolina today, and now the cleanup can begin. The flooding has left more than 1,500 people homeless, including about 300 here in the town of Tarboro. Both the Tar and Noose Rivers are expected to crest this weekend and then begin receding. So again, it looks like some dry weather for at least a few days. So hopefully things will uh, will improve for the folks here in eastern North Carolina. Now your temperature is 55 in Raleigh-Durham, 67 in Columbia, 64 for you in Atlanta. But again, south of our front, we are seeing some warmer temperatures here and also a little bit of wet weather, some scattered showers and even some thunder showers. But most of the rain is expected to be light However, you could see a few strong storms out there. We'll keep an eye on it for you. Well, that's it for the eastern U.S. Now, Nick has a look at the Midwest. And in the Midwest, we have seen a bit of rain around the Great Lakes region, largely due to here when summer's cool palette makes way for autumn's fiery tapestry. The Weather Channel's Jim Cantori knows where to view the best fall colors. All right, coming up in three... Oh, yeah, right. Coming up in three, two, one... Well, it's time now for our fall foliage report, and this time of the year, just a great time to get out and enjoy a lot of the fall festivals and craft shows out there, as well as some great leaf color. Look at this, the Rockies, the Sierra, upper Midwest, as well as up into northern New England, starting to experience some great color. Now, recent rain and wind has taken some of these leaves off the trees, but you do not have to go too far, even down to New York, Pennsylvania, and even the southern Appalachians, to find the first glimpses of the fall color show. It's starting to show up, and it will accelerate over the next couple of weeks because of these warm, sunny days and cool, crisp nights. Around the Twin Cities, Duluth, even up into the north woods of Wisconsin, some great fall color showing up, and even little Ontonagon up there in the UP of Michigan showing some great color as well. Not only accelerate, too, with warm, sunny days and cool, crisp nights. Recent snow, wind, and cold has taken some leaves off the trees in the Intermountain region, but down along the Front Range, let me take you to Colorado Springs. This is just how beautiful it is here. Those shimmering gold coins, we call them aspen leaves, and it's just a beautiful sight this time of the year as all this color just continues to explode in just about any place you drive. And there'll be more color, too, heading down into Denver the next couple of weeks, as well as into Chicago and many places across New England and the Appalachians as well. Heading out this weekend, here's what we can expect weather-wise. We start you off with dry weather for the most part in the northeast as well as the Rockies, but it does get a little bit more unsettled as we head into the weekend, especially for the Rockies and the Great Lakes and eventually into northern New England by the time Sunday goes around. Don't forget your camera and enjoy the drive. All right, Jim, thanks a lot for that report. Well, time now for our forecast, and it looks like uh, some big changes. We've already actually seen a few of those changes. What we saw Thursday morning, temperatures out ahead of a cold front here in the 50s and 60s. It was kind of warm, kind of muggy, but that front pushed eastward off the east coast, and behind it, some cooler temperatures. Friday morning, as a matter of fact, we may see those low temperatures dipping down into the 30s, 40s, and 50s, so a much chillier start to your day here. Also keeping an eye on some cooler temperatures behind this front 
and maybe even the chance for some wintry precipitation here in Montana and Wyoming and on into South Dakota. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Well, let's see what's in store for the rest of our forecast. And Friday morning, our front continues to move off the east coast. Again, a cool start to your day here. Not much moisture with this front until we head along the tail end of the front. And with this area of low pressure, we could see some rain. We could see some snow. Montana into the Dakotas. The rain maybe into South Dakota. Everyone else is really going to see some pretty quiet weather. One exception is extreme southern Florida, where the front is still draped across there. And we could still see some isolated showers or maybe some thunder showers. Our front here continues to move into the northeast, but again, we're just not going to see a lot of active weather with it. And the front back into the central states here, so this is really the only area where we're going to see much rain or snow at all. Everyone else is just going to have a very tranquil day. A tranquil night tonight, of course. A few areas could get rain, but the rainfall total is not expected to be impressive, and certainly the snowfall total is not all that impressive either. But the cool temperatures are impressive, 20s and 30s for your lows here. And it's going to be cool all the way down to the Gulf Coast. We'll see those temperatures in the 50s, almost into the 40s. Warming up pretty nicely tomorrow, though. We should see a mild day across the southern tier states. To the north, though, not warming up much at all, only into the 30s, 40s, and 50s. A great start to your day in the Northeast and a great afternoon for you. Sunny skies, temperatures in the mid-70s. New York, 74, 73 for you in Washington, D.C., Sunshine also here across the southeast. It is just going to be a gorgeous day in Atlanta and Charlotte and Memphis in the upper 70s under sunny skies. Chicago, mostly cloudy for you, but no rain in the forecast. You'll be around 66 for a high. And finally, in the west, more quiet weather, but another warm day. We will look for L.A. to warm up to around 89 degrees. And watch out in Phoenix, 101, your expected high. Well, just ahead, a check of the weather delays for your destination. Plus, we'll preview uh, conditions for your commute. Travel-wise is next. Lice killing treatments kill lice, but up to 30% of lice eggs survive and can cause reinfestation. So whether you use a shampoo or other treatment to kill lice, you also need clear lice egg remover to help remove the live eggs treatments leave behind. When you have an accident, you just want your car back the way it was. Fortunately, there is someone who's all about getting you back where you belong. Who? Who else? Your farmer's insurance agent. There's this place in the neighborhood where they have these outrageous, you pick two platters, and basically you pick two out of three entrees. It's two on one plate. You get the Cajun steak with all those sizzling spices, or a pile of succulent roasted garlic shrimp, or barbecue chicken with that sauce that sticks to your lips and your mind like some really interesting dream. It was too good to end, but it will, just like the you pick two platters. Two entrees, one plate, only at Applebee's. Well, time now for our TravelWise segment, which is sponsored by Michelin. And our Michelin Drivers Alert, Minneapolis, very gusty northwest winds. That could cause some problems for you. Be careful out there. But notice that aside from some windy conditions across the upper Midwest and into the northeast, we are not seeing much active weather out there at all. We have a little bit of rain here and there and uh, into Florida, but most of the country just very quiet. But again, some windy conditions here. This is our travel trouble spot. We could also still see some gusty winds into the northeast too. And rain out there, Florida, eastern Maine, that rain is coming to an end. Some rain here possible and right in here through South Dakota where we may also see some snow here through Montana and Wyoming. Some of the rain that, we, that we're seeing in Florida could be in the form of strong storms. We'll watch that for you and we'll also watch for some fog reducing your visibility in the northwest. In the northeast, very quiet, a cool start to your day, but no rain in your forecast for the rest of tonight and into tomorrow. You'll see sunny skies, 50 in Washington, D.C., 48 for you in Philadelphia, and 53 in New York. It's also going to be quiet here across the southeast, the Carolinas, and into Georgia. But again, Florida could see a little bit of rain. But sunny skies will greet you tomorrow morning in Atlanta at 50 degrees, 49 in Houston, and 52 for you in Dallas. Chicago, all's quiet here. Most of the rain is off to your north or well off to your west. 
Sunny in 44 tomorrow morning, 49 in St. Louis. And our final stop takes us west, where we're just not seeing much going on here at all, aside from some fog in the Pacific Northwest. You will see uh, 44 in Portland, 55 in clouds in San Francisco. And a reminder, you can always find additional information online at weather.com. Your Weekend Outlook is next. This program was sponsored by Michelin. Buy four and score with Michelin at a participating dealer near you. A baby monitor! You guys! You didn't! You did! Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Buy four Michelin tires now and get a free emergency roadside kit. Play the Michelin buy four and score game and maybe win a Dodge Viper, plus other great prizes. See your participating Michelin dealer by October 31st. Buy four and score with Michelin at a participating dealer near you. How important is comfort to you, to your family? A carrier high-efficiency furnace with our exclusive comfort heat technology can keep your entire home quietly and consistently comfortable. Room to room, hour after hour. For about the same amount of electricity a 100-watt bulb uses. Carrier. Custom-made indoor weather. Call 1-800-4-CARRIER for the carrier dealer nearest you. Well, it's time now for our Weekend Outlook, which is sponsored by Sara Lee. And a look at some of those events this weekend. The Apple Harvest Festival, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. 75 degrees on Saturday, partly cloudy skies. Enjoy the nice day. And you'll enjoy a very nice day in Pine Mountain, Georgia. Sunny and 80 for the Buick Challenge there. The Freiburg Fair in Maine. Clouds around, no rain, we think, and 62 on Sunday. And finally, the Napa Auto Care 500 in Martinsville, Virginia, 77, and plenty of sunshine for you on Sunday. We will have some cool temperatures across the northern states this weekend, but it's going to be nice and mild to the south. But watch out, the front separating those two air masses could mean some light rain for folks here in the Midwest and the Plain states. We'll see more of the same with those temperatures on Sunday, cool to the north of that front. But we're also going to see some wet weather out there. The Great Lakes, the northeast, back into the Rockies where you'll see some snow and some wet weather along the Gulf Coast too. Well, here's a look at what's going on out there right now. Stay tuned. We'll have more and your tropical update on Stormwatch next. This program was sponsored by Sara Lee. Add some delicious to your life. Hey, full-figure gals. Are you digging that underwire? Or is it digging you? Introducing the Playtex 18-hour Comfort Wire Bra. Designed with an underwire that's wrapped and cushioned against the skin to comfortably support your every move. Could it be a comfortable underwire? 18-hour from Playtex. Designing comfort. Well, it's that time of year when the summer's cool palette makes way for autumn's fiery tapestry. The Weather Channel's Jim Cantori knows where to view the best fall colors. Well, it's time now for our fall foliage report. And this time of the year, just a great time to get out and enjoy a lot of the fall festivals and craft shows out there, as well as some great leaf color. Look at this, the Rockies, the Sierra, upper Midwest, as well as up into northern New England, starting to explore the hammer and enjoy the drive. Well, you can get Jim's fall foliage reports along with peak viewing tips right here each week starting, at, uh, starting on Thursday evenings. Also, you can get leaf information from our website at weather.com. Just follow the links to foliage. It'll take you right there. Well, let's check now the forecast for tomorrow. Let's go back to Christina. All right, well, some big changes have taken place, and you're in store for some big changes tomorrow morning. As this morning, this is what we saw. A cold front was moving across the eastern U.S. At ahead of that cold front, some pretty warm temperatures. You were very mild, very muggy in the 50s and 60s. Well, that front is pushing on eastward, and those 50s and 60s are gone. You are going to wake up Friday morning to 89 degrees tomorrow. Well, just ahead, a check of the weather delays for your destination. Plus, we'll preview conditions for your commute. Travel Wise is next. Stay with us. This edition of WeatherScope is sponsored by Pearl Vision because no one cares for your eyes more than Pearl. 
This is Weatherscope. It's 30 minutes past the hour. A heat wave will have temperatures soaring in the danger zone across the south and west. Good morning, I'm Bonnie McLaughlin. That's good morning, I'm Vivian Brown. Last night's severe weather cut through the plains of the Midwest with reports of tornadoes in Kansas and Indiana. Two fatalities were reported in Missouri in Benton County when a car was swept away by flash flooding. Rain has plagued the Midwest also. Additionally, we had uh, flooding problems in Illinois. So far, 15 counties in northern Illinois have been declared disaster areas. Rain yesterday slowed efforts to clean up the massive flood-related debris in the suburban Chicago city of Aurora. Rain has also been a big problem in Indianapolis. It was a damp, wet Sunday there when temperatures were only in the 60s. But people should uh, look for better conditions today in Indianapolis as we don't anticipate any heavy rain in the region. As you can see on our severe thunderstorm outlook, we have the threat for thunderstorms in southern Wisconsin and the northwestern parts of Illinois, but not in Indiana. We've been watching a little weak trough of low pressure as it swings across the Midwest, and that in combination with a stationary front that is basically positioning itself right in this uh, direction, well, positioning itself right here, and along that front we'll find scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day today, and south of it with the heat and humidity, the thunderstorms will be building over many areas of the south. You can see already this morning we have clusters of storms uh, depicted in Kansas and also Pennsylvania. We'll zoom in on Kansas and show you this heavy rain moving out of Wichita and Topeka, quickly moving off to the east southeast at about 25 to 35 miles an hour. Here's another batch of pretty heavy rain in west and central Pennsylvania, down through central West Virginia. Around Charleston, West Virginia, we have some heavy rains this morning. Be careful. You have travel plans early this Monday. Monday morning in this region, roads will be slick and slippery, and certainly that will make for hazardous driving conditions. Around Chattanooga, Tennessee, we have some rain, too, and this is moving to the southeast. So it's crossing over the state border into northwest Georgia. So there is a chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms even around the Atlanta metro area as the Olympics continue today. So national radar shows where we have the most active weather right now, but later on, again, thunderstorms are expected to develop over the southeast, south of our front. We don't have the front depicted here, but our front is positioned right in here. South of it, we have a very warm and moist air mass. North of it, it is drier and a little cooler across the Midwest. Another warm day is shaping up for much of the west, so be prepared. It's going to heat up again today out west. I'm Bonnie. That's right, Vivian. Blistering heat with dangerously high temperatures will be the outlook for the western U.S. today. High humidity is adding to the oppressive conditions in Dallas, where the high yesterday was 98 degrees. Enjoying outdoor activities? Well, it's a little difficult under those kinds of conditions, but some of the residents found a shady area to kick back and relax or even take a casual stroll. Today the heat and humidity combined should make it feel like 110 degrees. Heat advisories are up for the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So why is it so hot in the western United States when you have that cool California current that flows right off the west coast where the temperatures, the water temperatures are very comfortable? Well, the reason is, is because instead of having an onshore flow bringing in that cooler air, you have an offshore flow. That wind pushes right down the mountains as it sinks it it just gets hotter and hotter and that is going to be prevalent for today so you've got the offshore winds the inland heat it just continues to build there's no cooling from the marine layer so you have lots of heat and in addition you have high pressure building in the upper layers of the atmosphere that high pressure causes sinking air so you don't even get clouds to develop and then the disturbances that come from the way out in the Pacific instead of coming straight on shore they're pushed up and over the top of that ridge and they are sent down into the nation's midsection. In fact, one of those little disturbances produced a tornado yesterday in Colby, Kansas. So as the heat continues to build in the western United States, what happens? The mercury rises. The temperatures by Wednesday and Thursday in Seattle, Portland, and Medford are going to be in the 90s, possibly even in the 100s. Well, let's take a look at our satellite view, and you can see the effects of that ridge of high pressure. There is a disturbance. It's moving up into British Columbia, and then it will eventually 
eventually be sent down into the north central United States. And here's that disturbance, or what's left of it, that moved across Kansas that produced that tornado in Colby yesterday. As for the uh, temperatures and the current situation, we have a frontal system that is slicing through the western United States. Good deal of fog has built up in Iowa where the visibility is down to a quarter of a mile around Cedar Rapids and in Dubuque. But in the western U.S. with just a couple of patches of fog along the west coast, that's it. It is a very quiet day. And the temperatures, they're getting off to a nice warm start. Phoenix, Arizona, already up to 89 degrees, 90 in Las Vegas, 64 for Portland, Oregon, 61 in Lander, Wyoming, a cool spot, Cutbank, Montana, 48 degrees there. And of course, the heat is going to continue to build. We have 100s expected throughout portions of Texas into Oklahoma, 110 plus, that's what you can expect out in the deserts of the Southwest. And it's that combination of heat and humidity that is going to cause some major problems across portions of Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, because you're looking at heat indices that are going to take it into the dangerous category. And Vivian, it is just not going to be a good day there. And Atlanta's weather is certainly getting plenty of extra attention these days because of the Olympics. That's of right. Course. The Olympics are in town. Stay with us here on the Weather Channel because coming up, we'll have the forecast for the different mm -hmm. Olympic venues. And also, we'll check on your traveling conditions across the country. All of that coming up next as Weather Scope continues. Camera and enjoy the drive. Well, you can get Jim's fall foliage reports along with peak viewing tips right here each week starting, at, uh, starting on Thursday evenings. Also, you can get leaf information from our website at weather.com. Just follow the links to foliage. It'll take you right there. Well, let's check now the forecast for tomorrow. Let's go back to Christina. All right. Well, some big changes have... And welcome back to Weatherscope. I'm Bonnie McLaughlin. And I'm Vivian Brown. We'll have the forecast for your traveling conditions in just a moment. But first, the outlook for the summer games. Olympic visitors have been putting up with the warm and steamy weather in Atlanta. Yesterday, scattered showers kept the temperatures only in the 80s most of the day. But very little of the rain fell in downtown Atlanta, where most of the events were held. So, Olympic forecast for Atlanta, Savannah, and Orlando. We have all of that for you as we check on the different venues across the southeast. Okay, here's our latest satellite picture, and you do see fair skies for most areas. We have some clouds here in Tennessee. We've had some thunderstorms around Chattanooga, and more clouds back in Kansas. A, a fairly large complex of storms moved across the eastern parts of the state this morning. It seems as though the overall aerial coverage with these storms is starting to decrease this morning, but it is basically along our frontal boundary that is pretty much stationary and positioned itself perpendicular to the east coast. It is along this front that we'll find the scattered showers and storms, kind of the vocal point for the severe weather today. But anywhere south of the front, it's really going to heat up as we have a broad tropical air mass south of the front from Texas all the way to North Carolina. Look at the temperatures already this morning in the mid and upper 70s, even 80s in some areas like Birmingham, 80 degrees. Uh, 82 in Panama City, 76 already in Atlanta, 77 in New Orleans. So we have the official forecast for the Olympics today in Atlanta. Scattered thunderstorms, low 90s expected. In Savannah, some of the sailing events taking place today. Scattered thunderstorms, you'll have a west wind about 10 miles an hour, so at least the winds will not pose a big problem for your sailing events. Low 90s expected. And partly cloudy in Orlando for the soccer events, mid 90s expected. Bonnie. Thanks, Lon Vivian. Well, if you're going to be traveling today, here's a look at where some of the travel problems are going to sneak up and uh, get you where you don't like it. You're going to have to watch out. A little disturbance is moving across Kansas into Missouri. It's already producing some moderate to heavy rains and a few thunderstorms there. Also, thunderstorms popping up across South Central uh, North or South Dakota at this time. But of course, this radar is quiet to compared to what it could be later on this afternoon. With the daytime heating, you could see thunderstorms popping up in this entire Gulf Coast region, and there is a possibility for some strong thunderstorms to develop in the Mid-Atlantic region. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. The western United States, absolutely no problems whatsoever. High pressure, the dominant feature there, sinking air, no clouds, lots of sunshine, lots of heat. That's going to be the problem. But with that stationary front and the little disturbances moving around it, scattered showers are anticipated from Pennsylvania right on down to the southern tip of Florida, back over to Kansas and all the way up to northern Minnesota. And the thunderstorms, these 
well, right now, right throughout the day. And then as we head into the late afternoon and the evening hours, you may have to watch out for some strong to severe thunderstorms popping up in the mid-Atlantic region. As for the windy travel, there's an area of low pressure that is producing some strong gusty winds across the north central U.S. And there is fog. Cedar Rapids, Iowa is looking at one quarter visibility right now. So let's see if that is going to improve during the next couple of days with the look ahead and Vivian. Okay, let's uh, check on the uh, changes in the offing as we detail the upper air pattern first. Big ridge of high pressure developing out west. Now when you get a ridge of high pressure, you're talking about sinking air and when the air sinks, you don't get many clouds to form without the presence of clouds or sunshine. And you know, when you have sunshine, temperatures respond to the heat. So we're talking 90s, 100s, 110 degrees in some areas. So with the ridge of high pressure building out west and the heat building, we'll have a trough of low pressure over the east, so it will not be as hot as what we have seen over many areas over the southeast. A little weak cold front at the surface will swing through northern Georgia, northern Mississippi, and Alabama. So by midweek Atlanta, temperatures will be approaching 90 degrees instead of in the mid-90s. So here's a look at the forecast highs for tomorrow. Still very warm over the immediate southeast. Texas, you know it's hot deep in the heart of Texas and the heat starts to build over the intermountain region, the interior regions of Washington and Oregon with our ridge of high pressure. As far as precipitation goes, showers will be moving into New England tomorrow, so enjoy today. The tail end of the front will still create some showers over the southeast and then back into the plains, Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri. That will be the case on Thursday. And notice on Friday, more scattered showers and storms invading the southeast but improving over the Midwest. Well, thank you for joining us for this edition of WeatherScope. And stay tuned because a look at your tropical weather is just ahead. float through life when you can drive. BMW is proud to be the official mobility provider for the 1996 Olympic Torch Relay. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW. A heat wave will have temperatures soaring in the danger zone across the south and west. Good morning, I'm Bonnie McLaughlin. And I'm Rick Griffin. Last night's severe weather cut through the plains and Midwest with reports of tornadoes in Kansas and Indiana. In Missouri, two teenagers died in Benton County when their car was swept away by flash flooding there. You know, rain is... Dangerously high temperatures. That's going to be the outlook for the West today. These folks in Sacramento are pretty active right now. It might be hard to believe that the temperature was well over 100 degrees yesterday. Playing volleyball in the heat may not be the smartest idea, but having water handy certainly is. Sacramento will have another scorcher today in the hundreds, so keep those fluids handy. And high humidity is adding to the oppressive conditions in Dallas, where the temper temperature yesterday hit 98 degrees. Enjoying out Outdoor activities is a little difficult under those conditions, but some residents found a shady area to kick back and relax or just take a casual stroll. Today, the heat and humidity combination will make it feel like 110 degrees, so heat advisories have been posted for the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And just exactly why is it so hot? Well, instead of getting an onshore flow today with that cool marine layer right there along the California coastline, we're getting an offshore flow, and that is going to keep the temperatures on the warm side. Also, high pressure is building in the upper layers of the atmosphere, and that takes the disturbances up into Canada and then shoots them down into the Midwest by bypassing the west coast completely and with sinking air you don't get a lot of cloud cover so no relief in sight from clouds no chance for precipitation either so it is going to be stifling today and with the mercury on the rise during the next couple of days with this condition persisting we're going to see temperatures in the pacific northwest make their way into the 90s and the 100s let's take a look at a satellite view and you'll be able to see the effects of that ridge of high pressure 
Generally clear skies over the western United States with the disturbances riding up and over that ridge. And then the isobar is indicating an offshore flow. So very, very quiet in the west. But the farther towards the east you head, you start to run into some fog. We're down to about an eighth of a mile of visibility for Broken Bow in Nebraska. North Platte reporting a quarter of a mile. McCook, a sixteenth of a mile. So this fog is dense and it is going to cause some problems this morning. Here's a look at the current temperatures. 57 in Reno, 90 in Las Vegas. Remember, it's still early in the morning out there. 62 in Salt Lake City, Utah. And as for the temperatures for today, they're going to be in the 90s, the 100s, even the 110 plus category. As you head into the deserts of the southwest, Death Valley may top out at 120 degrees today, near normal temperatures across the north central United States. And the heat index, well, you're going to have to watch out. Heat advisories have been posted for portions of Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Why? Because it is going to be very, very dangerous out there. And hopefully, Rick, you'll have some good news for us in the upcoming forecast. Actually, Bonnie, uh, late this week, it may begin to cool down slightly in Texas and the southern plains as a front eventually makes its way towards you folks, and that'll increase. It won't bring any cool air, but it will bring in a cloud cover and precipitation with the showers and storms, and that will hold temperatures down a bit. Today is going to be a sizzler in Texas, though. Most spots near or slightly above 100 degrees, and you combine the century mark temperatures with high humidity. We're talking heat indices, 110 to 115. So. Take it easy. Popcorn storms along the front, including uh, Virginia, Georgia. Uh, the Olympic venues could be affected by thunderstorms later on today. Meanwhile, a nice day and a nice night for New England, much of the northern plains and a good chunk of the west as high pressure dominates. So warm to hot conditions today, cooling down dramatically overnight. Precipitation east of the Rockies, the heaviest pockets, southeast Kansas, parts of Missouri and northern Arkansas and isolated locations in the Carolinas, Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia will have heavy downpours this afternoon and this evening. Coolest air today, 60s in Maine, hot stuff in Texas, sizzling summertime heat in the southwest, followed by lows of 90 degrees around Yuma and Lake Havasu City, back to 110 to 120 uh, tomorrow. Now, through this upcoming week, the jet stream will continue to keep it I keep a series of fronts through here. That means no heat wave for you folks around Chicago, Detroit, or Pittsburgh. The heat continues for a while in Texas, but begins to uh, abate somewhat, at least back into the 90s, we think Thursday and Friday. Here's why. Eventually, a front will be settling south. And although we don't see much in the way of storms on Wednesday, Thursday, storms begin to appear around Dallas. And by Friday, we think numerous thunderstorms will return to Oklahoma and the Southern Plains and should still say, say pretty soggy around Atlanta, Jackson, and uh, New Orleans. But some nice weather for yeah. Chicago and San Francisco. So skip the venues and head north. Yeah, for dry <laughs> weather late this week. That would be true. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. We've got uh, much more coming up.